Okay, first of all, um, for all our listeners, welcome back to the big interview. For anybody who's looking at this video, this is hands across the ocean from the city of Barcelona to the beautiful city of Newcastle and one of their most um, international, most exciting players, um, Federico Fernandez. Um, welcome to the big interview, Fede. Thanks for giving us your time. Thank you, thank you. It's a pleasure to, to be here. Oh, well, we can we can soon change that. Um, <laughs> Betty, we're going to begin with a true or false round, and I only need okay. one word: true or false. Okay, here we go. Although you are a central defender with not so many professional goals as a senior career, in your soul, in your alma. You're a born goal scorer. Un goleador nato. True or false? False. <laughs> okay, so I've started off wrong. Okay, okay. This one will be, I'm sure. Italy and Germany in their history have won eight World Cups between them, total. But you've played both of their national teams a number of times. You've won every game against them and you've scored against Germany. True or false? Absolutely false. Whoa, we're going to have to have a conversation about that one later on. Okay, the <laughs> third one is this one. This one is about emotions, baby. On the 8th of July, 2014, you were so sad that you nearly cried when Germany scored seven times against Brazil to knock Brazil out of the World Cup in Brazil. So sad that you nearly cried. True or true or false? True. <laughs> this is a difficult interview. These, these answers aren't going the way that I thought they would go. So, so tricky. On June the 9th, 2012, as you rose above your Napoli teammate, Bruno Uvini, and you deliberately directed your header in off the post, so that your Napoli teammate, Rafael, couldn't reach it. And you helped Argentina beat Brazil 4-3 with your goal, plus a hat-trick from some little guy who lives in Barcelona. You shouted, Toma, nos vemos in Napoli, y estáis comprando los cervezas perdedores. Take that, we'll see each other in the Napoli training ground, and you're buying the beers, losers. <laughs> Absolutely true. true. false. <laughs> Okay, the last two. Ferry Fernandez is the second best Argentinian ever to play for Napoli. That's it. True or false? Yeah, I agree. True. True, me too. And the last one. Rafa Benitez is an easygoing, laid back coach who always says to his players, Look, guys, you defend however you like today. I'll just do the press conferences. True or false? False. Completely false. <laughs> yes. We're, we're out of the true-false round now. Some of the uh, listeners who haven't followed your magnificent career with the Argentine national team, with the Estudiantes, with Napoli, with Getafe, with Swansea, with Newcastle, they know a little bit more about you. But, Fede, let, let's go back to the beginning because we've had a number of guests who've talked about El Raton Ayala. El Raton Ayala. We had one, I don't know if you know this guy, John Hartson. He played for Arsenal, he played for Celtic, he played for Wales. He's a very strong, successful, um, some would say frightening centre forward. And when we asked him to talk about his most difficult opponent, he immediately said El Raton Ayala. You grew up um, with him, Ayala, as your idol. I want you to tell us why, please. I want you to describe him. So when Fede was a young boy, un pibito, why did your attention finally settle on this guy? How did he inspire you? Describe him as a footballer, please. Well, uh, obviously, uh, when I was young, uh, I watch a lot of football and he was probably in the best moment 
of his career and uh, he with the Argentina national team. So uh, he had a, a really good World Cup uh, by 2006, uh, I think. And obviously, I was already set in as my position central back, so I really fully focused on uh, his movement and uh, his aggressivity. He was, he's not really tall, but uh, he had a really good timing. Uh, that's why he scored uh, so many, so many goals. And yeah, you know, uh, playing for Argentina in a World Cup is a big, big thing. So uh, I remember I was in the school with my, my friends and watched uh, the games. And say, wow, I, one day you know, I would like to to play at uh, his level, no? Uh, later on, when I signed for Naples, I had the opportunity to, to talk with him because he was in Naples as well. Uh, he advised me uh, about the city and the club. And uh, obviously, he was talking about football. And uh, he said, uh, look, you can improve this or that. So, it was uh, very helpful and when I talk with him and hopefully uh, take the, the opportunity to to spoke with, with a great player and uh, try to uh, copy uh, a great thing. You shared an agent, I think, for a small time and that put you two together. Yeah. When you began to speak to him, describe exactly what kind of advice he was giving you because you must understand there'll be lots of boys and girls watching this now listening to this now who'll be like if, if i can learn from these two guys from the conversation they'll take what you say specifically and maybe apply it yeah of course um obviously we talk about uh, first uh, the city and uh, the, the fans at the club of napoli but the specific of uh, the the game uh, he saw that uh, at that time uh, I was committing a lot of foul in the in a in an area when I don't uh, need to do it. For example, when the striker receives the ball uh, back to the goal, um, he say, "Look, uh, he's not going anywhere. Uh, if you don't let turn, keep it. Don't make a foul because sometimes it's what the striker wants." And uh, we were very clear and specific. So. Uh, after that, I, I start working and thinking about uh, this action and improving uh, my game. Because you've got, you share a nationality, you share a position, but physically, you're both very different indeed. For people that don't remember Ayala, he, he isn't the height or, or the power really for a centre half. In my opinion, everything was played with his brain and his judgment. Um, so when he was telling you to, what we call in Britain, jockey the striker to, to hold him in a certain position, he knew he was talking to somebody who had bigger advantages than he did, right? Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, as you described very, very well, uh, we are different. And, uh, but I mean, for me, the most important thing is the concept of the game, that uh, uh, we can take advance of, of that. So even if you are slow or uh, strong central back or anyway, the, the concept of the game, of the position, of, of the, uh, if you, you can avoid some kind of uh, mistake or, or position is, is, is great. And someone from outside uh, told you, because maybe, you know, when we are in the game, uh, or inside you don't see the, the full picture, uh, you can say that. Um, uh, yeah, uh, just working in detail because uh, for me as a defender, uh, you need to be concentrating attention every single detail. And today uh, you play with, again, teams that uh, they are, for example, really well in set plays and they're looking for fouls and something. So if you, you are in a position when you are not necessary to, to make a foul, uh, so stay in your feet and uh, don't, don't give nothing to, to the others. Tell me about, because you talk about the concept of football, 
Mm, before you came out of Argentina, you were coached for a long time by Alex Sabella, and we're going to talk about him a little bit. You were also uh, taught by Toto Perizzo. Um, so Perizzo was also a really high quality centre half, very successful. Eventually, he becomes coach of Celta Vigo, takes them nearly, nearly to the final of the Europa League. He recovered from his cancer, cancer battle, thank, thank goodness, yeah. recently. Um, given that you had been a centre half for a long time at Estudiantes, before you came to Napoli and, and Ayala gave you more advice, what was it you were doing? I'd ask, did, did you have this concept that if I see the ball, I must win it? A, a kind of mentalidad guerrero. That rather than waiting and thinking and not going into the trap, was every ball a ball that you, you had to win? Was that part of it? Yeah, some part of the yeah, of course. Uh, I mean, uh, when you are young uh, and probably you want to to try to impress or try every time to, to pass it between the line when sometimes it's not possible, but you try because uh, you don't have much experience, you know. Uh, over the years, uh, when you are uh, coaching bar, you say Isabella, Berizzo, I had Berizzo six months before uh, I came to Europe. And we spent with him uh, six months after the, the normal training we had with all the group. Talk to me and he say, "Come on, come here. Defend one v one. You need this in Europe. You need to be strong. So this kind of thing. So he prepared uh, myself to to come here. No, and um, yeah, I can say today that I changed my game a little bit in terms of uh, don't force the ball if you don't really need. Um, uh, but I say don't make a foul in a position where it could be dangerous to to us." So obviously, little by little, year by year, you you get more gains in your back experience, and uh, you can recognize uh, the time of the game uh, and manage uh, better. You you know, I guess even in Argentina, they must have the expression "never meet your heroes," never, with <laughs> the idea that it's always going to be a disappoint disappointment. You're better to have the image in your heart and in your soul. So, football aside, a un lado, what was it like when you meet your hero? What was the process of getting advice and friendship from Ayala? Yeah, well, uh, that you say is strange, you know. Uh, I meet uh, top players uh, during my career that you used to watch uh, every week by, by TV. Uh, and they were to shake your hands and uh, say hi. It's like, oh, it's a normal guy, no? Oh, oh it's special, it's fun, or oh, it's different with uh, player you see on TV. Uh, yeah, but obviously I was surprised. I was joked uh, because uh, it's been long, long time that uh, uh, I waited for the opportunity to to meet him, and he. He sent me the Zaragoza T-shirt uh, signed by him and, and got in my little museum. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it was great. It was great for me and uh, can share this moment. There's a question. Now I'm going to change direction. Will the people who listen to this interview, can they get a discount on the tickets to go into the Fede Federico, uh, Fede Fernandez Museum? Can they get, uh, is that, can we negotiate uh, that? We'll be, we'll be for free. Uh, one day we'll be for free. Uh, you're here, you're open, here. You're open here. To the, all the fans uh, follow us. Is there a bar and a guided tour? A bar? Well, it could be, it could be. Uh, I think the fans will love it. Uh, a beer. Uh, which we're watching my, my t shirts. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we're talking culturally. I, I need you to explain something to me about your culture, please. We've okay. already mentioned El Raton Ashala. Some people will know that means he was called the mouse. If I'm not wrong, I think you were called Pajaro and El Flaco. El Flaco means skinny guy. Yeah. Uh, Pajaro, what does that mean? The beard. The bird. The bird, yeah. Because of uh, my, my town, 
uh, yeah, my father uh, it was called for all the, the town in Pajaro, so uh, we are, me and my my brother and my sister, the pajaritos, no? the small small birds. So a little bird. uh, oh. I take I take uh, this, uh, yeah, I carry with, uh, but is my friend, my close friends know only uh, this one, and then when I was in a student, the skinny because I had one ninety and easy to, to say the skinny one. But there's perfetti. There's more. There's so many more. So, for example, if I'm not wrong, Berizzo was called Toto Berizzo, right? Yeah. What does Toto mean? Toto. Uh, I think it's uh, because of Eduardo, they call, they call Toto. Uh, in Argentina, so, yeah, you know, in Argentina it's very common. Uh, you have a name, but uh, some people never call for your name in your life. Bro but exactly, you go your whole life and you only get called the nicknames. Okay, what about two guys? And you can already see where I'm going here because um, Coco Pasile, maybe we'll leave to one side Coco Pasile. And Loco Gatti, the, the crazy Gatti. But there's the Brujo and the a Bruja and the Brujita. Um, because one thing you shared with an, uh, another idol, Seba Veron, was that you, you two are part of a dynasty because your dad was a hugely successful, famous player with the Estudiantes and Seba Veron's father was a huge footballer, magical footballer, magical, so therefore he became Bruja or Brujo? Uh, Bruja. Bruja. The, 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 it means witch, but it, I guess for him it means the wizard, right? The wizard. The wizard. And Juan Sebastian Veron became the little wizard, the Brujita. Your pizza, yes. Exactly. Okay, okay. So two <laughs> questions. Why so many apodos in your culture? Why so many nicknames? Why, why does everybody have a crazy one? I don't know. I think people, you know, try to, to find the, the, funny, the funny way to, to call uh, someone. So uh, it could be that you said this place we're on because of your father. So you keep uh, it's a familiar. Uh, Culture, it goes on, it uh, gets passed down from generation yeah. to generation. But I can tell you, any Argentinian uh, people uh, is called different from, from the name, or short name, or nickname, or you know, or you look like a, a, a dog, they call it dog, I don't know, something like that. So it's funny, it's funny. Someone is really, really funny. Tigre Falcao, Pocho Lovetsi. Okay, okay. So at least now yeah. we all know a, a little bit more about it. But hablando de, de brujas, talking about witches and little witches. Again, like Ajala um, Ferron, who the people who don't look with a big vista at world football in the UK, maybe they only remember him playing well at Manchester United, but in a time when United wasn't so successful and then the move to Chelsea wasn't so good. But this was an extraordinary footballer and I remember Darren Fletcher when he was at Manchester United told me that he would sit in the dressing room before a game and in the tiny dressing room with everybody moving around and getting changed, Paul Scholes and Juan Verón would be playing keepy uppy between everybody, knocking the ball through legs in the dressing room and Darren who played 450 times for Manchester United, said to himself, looking at these guys, I'm never going to get another game for United in midfield ever again. Tell us more about Juan Sebastian Ferron, the footballer, the guy, because you ended up playing with him. Um, in fact, he made one of your goals, but it's to the antes. He gave the asistencia and now he's the presidente. Yeah. So tell us about this man. Uh... Oh, Sebastian is a special, special guy uh, with uh, a very strong personality, uh, ambition, a winner. Uh, as a player, uh, he has a lot of quality. Long passes, unbelievable. Uh, yeah, he came to Europe and he was very successful. Um, he back to the Estudiantes in a very good age, 
in 2006. Uh, he won two leagues and he won the uh, Libertadores. And I was the process uh, with him. It was when I was 18. So I uh, had the experience to play along, alongside him. It was extraordinary, honestly. Uh, in terms of everything that we talked before, uh, professionally, the, the one, the first to, to arrive at the training ground, the last to, to leave, uh, every single day training uh, so well. Obviously, he had problem with his ankle and knee, but I can say he's, he's doing everything to, to be on the field because uh, he wants to, to win it. And for me, uh, as I say, he, he gave me a lot of binds. Uh, he tried to improve me. He said, uh, you have a lot of potential to, to the future play in the national team or come to Europe and stay for a long, long time. Uh, he, wasn't, he wasn't wrong. Uh, it's today that I spoke with him uh, very often. Uh, I had my, my uh, seat uh, in the student in the stadium, in the new stadium, a beautiful stadium of Estudiante de la Plata, uh, because I helped. Uh, he called me and they said, you want to help uh, to buy some seats. And uh, well, the, the stadium was in uh, building. And they said, of course, uh, no problem. Uh, so yeah, I mean, uh, it was great as a footballer, but sure, five, five years. Uh, within a student, it was absolutely a pleasure. When we first saw him in Europe, I remember noticing him strongly at Sampdoria. And at Sampdoria, he didn't look like the Argentinian players I'd seen before because of two things. Yes, we, we'd seen, like, so for example, you're joining on the big interview. We have only had two Argentinian interviews before. One is Pablo Sabaleta, who you know so well. But the other one was before your time, your dad maybe knew Osvaldo Ardiles. So if you grew up and watched um, Argentinian football in the 70s, like I did, it was a little bit slower. It was quite hard, quite tough, quite cynical. But gradually, there were footballers of fantastic quality. Osvaldo Ardiles or Kivia would be two that came to Britain. Alex Sabella came to Sheffield and Leeds. So we saw quality. But Seba Veron had genius quality. His passing, his 1v1 skill, his vision, all of those were special. But how he worked, how he ran at Sampdoria, he ran like, I don't know, like a German player. It was close everything, win every ball. And the mix made him unbelievable for both Sampdoria and Lazio. Do you recognize the, the, the things that I, that I saw in my head when I, when I first watched him in Serie A? Do you understand what I mean about him being looking unusual for an Argentinian footballer? Yeah, yeah, of course. I totally, uh, I totally agree. Uh, probably this kind of, of player with uh, his quality, ambition, probably they don't run much, but. Uh, he, he was the opposite. Uh, he was the, the first. And when you play with, with him, you say, wow, this guy uh, played uh, 10 years in Europe and come here and how, how fight and uh, go to the floor and say, okay, we need to, to go with him. We need to, to be a, at the same level if, if we can. And 100% he improved the, the student score. That's why he being successful. Uh, with uh, Simeone as a coach in 2006, uh, and then uh, the era of Alejandro Sabella. Uh, he, he was, uh, I'd say, a winner. And uh, every single day, they push uh, every guy in the squad uh, to throw and relax him because he, he don't came uh, to a estudiante to, to wait uh, the time, no? uh, coming to, to, to winning. And, I do everything to, to move the club forward. So, uh, yeah, it's absolutely, uh, I think everyone uh, enjoy watching him on the field. And, uh, and us, we had the, the opportunity to, to see online his quality, and uh, it was amazing. Because 
maybe I can make a comparison with they're slightly different ages, but Roman Riquelme and Juan Veron, Seba Veron, had similar kinds of qualities, or certainly they shared certain attributes. But Seba Veron lived every game, every season at three times the speed of Roman Riquelme, which doesn't stop Roman Riquelme being a, a, an unbelievable footballer for Boca Juniors, for 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 the national team. But that's the comparison that seemed unusual to me because Seba Veron could have played the, the match rhythm, the match tempo, the same way as Roman Riquelme and speeded things up with his brain and his pass. He, he could have stopped there, but instead... His, his legs and lungs always showed, I want everything. When people, you didn't see him play, I didn't see him play Di Stefano. You listen to people talking about Di Stefano and he wanted to play in every position to, to get the ball and win the ball and pass the ball to himself. And that's what was part of his greatness. And Veron seems to come from, from that linear. Yeah, of course. I mean, uh, well, you mentioned uh, Riquelme, no? Uh, but uh, a great number 10. But uh, yeah, of course, everyone is different. And Kelme was very successful, probably ran much less than, than Verón. But anyway, he was very effective. Uh, so depending on what uh, you need or, or what uh, your team needs at the moment, but uh, uh, you have a philosophy, uh, and Verón always had this young part. Uh, to to push the passion uh, and mix with his vision and his quality. Let's um, Fede, let's advance to going to the Sao Paulo Stadium, to the south of Italy. You you have some Italian ancestry. At what stage? I mean, even before you go to the city of Napoli, Naples. When do people start talking to you about Diego Armando? When do people start saying, look out, this is his city, or, or the pressure is crazy? Because where you grew up, before you moved to Buenos Aires, you, you grew up in Tranquilidad. Eh? Things were laid back, asados, you said, the silence of the, the población. And you're going to maybe the craziest city, football city in the world. So yeah. explain to us first impressions because it's really difficult to explain, uh, to be honest, uh, because you need to live uh, there to, to see. But when uh, you become uh, a Napoli player, so your history is totally different uh, in your time in the city. When you put the f your first feet in, uh, the fan is unbelievable, passionate. Uh, like in the, in the South America, uh, you are a superstar. Uh, basically, if you go out for, for a dinner, uh, that I was at that time with uh, La Bessi, Cavani, people outside the restaurant, 500 people there uh, waiting for you, security. Uh, so they recognize uh, so quickly. I, I always remember when I was in in Swansea, uh, three years after I left Naples, I came back for international break to to Naples. And I wore a hat, sunglasses, and I walked in, in the street with my uh, with my wife. Uh, at that point, we we passed a uh, a group of uh, children about around eight, ten, twelve years old, ten, fifteen of them. And I was like that, and someone looked at me and said, Fernandez, 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 Fernandez. And they are very common. Oh, everyone thought Fernandez here. So <laughs> it was a panic in, in the street. Uh, I was fine. So I found with 50, 50 people there taking photos. Uh, it was, it was, yeah, it was for three years uh, like that. And, uh, and we were in a, in a really good shape with the team as well, playing Champions League. Uh, we won two uh, Italian Cup, so it was a great time. Uh, and the fans really enjoyed so, uh, yeah, it. Uh, I never experienced something uh, that passionate and strong with the fans in Cardiff. 
Pochol, uh, Pochol Avetsi, one, one time UEFA sent me to a training center in Paris when he was playing for Paris Saint-Germain and we had, we had to film some, some training with him. Just me, the camera and him doing exercises. Strange guy because he said to me, I'm not a very good player. I just try hard. And I was like, wait, 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 wait. But this is what he said. And then he told me about going to a shoe shop one day in Naples. And they went to the shoe shop. It was quiet. It was a dark night. And like you said, he said that within 10 minutes, he looked outside and there was no way of leaving. Hundreds of people outside the shoe shop. He said that he had a house where the garden went down to the Mediterranean. And people would hire boats so that they could sail around to the bottom of his garden and shout, what's all I see to him and, and wake him up in the night. And when you were there, what's the craziest thing that happened to you? Yeah, yeah, I know the, the Pocho house. Uh, I live very close. So uh, after a year, I've been uh, many times to, to his house. And yeah, because it's a private village, uh, people waiting outside the, the gate, or that you say you can find with boats and you can shout to, to him. Um, no, uh, this kind of thing, you know, in, in player, you need to to be, you know, inside the, the car because uh, everyone wants to, to stop you. And obviously, I was young, but uh, La Vesi and Cavani and this uh, big, big star at the time, uh, people absolutely crazy. So every time we, we try to do something, <laughs> It was absolutely a chaos, you know, you need to to spend five, six hours for a dinner because <laughs> you need to arrive very early and it's impossible to, to live after. But uh, yeah, no, I, I had always a uh, very nice uh, experience in the city uh, that uh, I really enjoyed. We're lucky to have supporters in uh, Bet365 who are our supporters and, and our sponsors. And they said to us, they, 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 it caught their eye that I think the first goals you scored for Napoli were in the Champions League. And Napoli is there, you're 3-0 down. It's before Benitez, it's uh, Walter Mazzari. Yeah. You're in Bavaria and Ezekiel Lovetsi and Gokan Inler set you up for two headers. The game is crazy. Tell us about the experience of being 3-0 down to Bayern Munich two Fede Fernandes headers to make it 3-2, the drama of nearly equalising, and this must have made the fans even crazier about their new Argentinian Central. Yeah, well, it was a really good impact. It was, uh, it was my first uh, Champions League game, away from home, uh, with a powerful Really yeah, doppietta means brace in English. Maybe you're because in the in the true false, when I said you have the soul of a proven goal scorer, a natural goal scorer, you said uh -huh. no, and I think that's not true. We're uh -huh. going to talk a lot about your goals. Doppietta means brace in English. And maybe this is a boring question, but I I want to know. I'm curious about it, Fede. You you. You weren't old enough really to see Diego Maradona in his best form, but he's inescapable for an Argentinian because, never mind football, he's one of the great sporting icons of anywhere, any country, all time. For those people listening to our interview who've never been to Napoli, when you went there or, or in all your time there, how obvious is it still? that this is Maradona's city. Is his traces gone or is it still really obvious? No, it's really, really obvious. Yeah. You see pink painting on the street. Uh, and when you are Argentina, you say Maradona, Maradona, Maradona. And yeah, I meet Cruz Colotti, the central back. He played with 
Luis Maradona, he had a, a restaurant in Apple, so I was very often uh, with him, and uh, he, he absolutely uh, loved Maradona. Everyone, uh, or uh, they uh, imagine that they, they won a couple of trophies with, uh, with him, and uh, 